With four and a half to play in the third of game two, Jason Tatum drained his 6-3 of the night to make it 68-62. Less than six minutes later, it was a 29-point game after a Warriors vintage third quarter blitzkrieg to put the Celtics away. We'll get to that run in a minute, but first, this game started just like the last one ended, with Jalen Brown dropping bombs, netting back-to-back -back transition threes from the same spot over Klay Thompson and Draymond Green. The Celtics had some success in Game 1 against the Warriors' zone using a simple middle screen for the ball handler, so they come back to it in Game 2, forcing Steph Curry to slide over, but Brown's on fire so he bites hard on the closeout, and Jalen drives it home for an and one. Cross matches in transition have been important in this series. Grant Williams is switched onto Curry on this three-point attempt, so he can run down the floor and take Steph to the post, which forces defensive help, and the ball ends up in Brown's hands for yet another triple. But that was about it for Brown, because Draymond just shut him down for the rest of the game. This was the key tactical adjustment out of Game 1 for Golden State, where Brown had success attacking Clay and other guards off switches, so Steve Kerr stuck green onto Brown, and while that's a great earthy color scheme, it was a difficult matchup for Jalen. Draymond is quick enough to stay with Brown's driving game, and yet he can still roam off in the paint to help dribble penetration and recover without too much damage. That 7'1 wingspan and his active hands are a tough match for Brown's sometimes loose ball handling. Jalen has a half step but picks it up as Green swipes, and that leaves him in a straitjacket, and that's just a defensive clinic out on the perimeter. He can also chase Brown away from the ball, not conceding soft switches in these spots, and his speed and length make shots much harder on closeouts, high-fiving Jalen into a miss here. On this one, Curry switched on to Tatum, and this is a masterful stunt at the ball by Green, jabbing to force Tatum to pick up his dribble, then the ridiculous closeout to completely alter Brown's shot. Jalen was just 1 for 11 with 4 points after that hot first quarter start, choking off one of the key cogs of the Celtics offense. Draymond's help defense was important in this game too, coming with a late double here and somehow catching the ball with his forearm to force another turnover. He caused another turnover on the first possession of the night, playing the lob perfectly against Rob Williams, poking the ball free on the way down, leading to this wild scramble where Time Lord stepped out of bounds. He even matched up with Al Horford on the opening tip, smothering him for a jump ball and declaring it wouldn't be as easy as game one. Gary Payton II returning from injury helped defensively too because he could take Tatum without any mismatch, Draymond jump switches onto him to completely blow up the play, and his pressure leads to a rushed pass and an easy Curry steal. Like Draymond, Peyton can also guard just about anyone, and he kept the Jays in front of him most of the night, leading to another tip pass and a steal. Curry also had another strong defensive game. He's not big enough to take away Tatum's sidestep three, but he's sturdy enough to stay in front of both Jays on the outside and funnel them into help or long jumpers. Late in the first, Tatum is hunting for a mismatch against Jordan Poole, and it's Curry who reaches in to strip him, and that leads to a Golden State runout where the defense sparks their offense and Steph gets a great look from three. Of course, Curry's offense drove the Warriors on that end, and this was a microcosm of his success throughout this postseason, playing under control, handling pressure, and scoring in the mid-range to keep defenses off balance. On this side out, he gets Horford on a switch, and Brown stunts to bother him, but that super tight handle keeps Curry balanced, so he can rock right into another move, and that is just filthy. I mentioned cross matches earlier, and this time Horford ends up on him in transition, and as good as Horford is out there, Curry is so crafty and patient about finding an angle or using his body, and his passing has been massive all season. 
This might be Steph's best passing season ever, so when he blows by Horford and meets a wall of defenders, he usually finds the best pass. His typical off-ball gravity was present too, freezing Horford on this handoff for just a beat so Draymond can spring free. Both Rob Williams and Brown have had a few bumpy off-ball switches in this series, and this Steph cut through the lane brings both of them so Kevon Looney ends up with another wide-open layup. And I really loved this one in transition, where Curry is ahead of Clay, and by cutting horizontally, he pulls Smart out of the way, then pops out to the line to hold Rob's attention, and the result is neither Celtic defender is there to help Brown, so Clay waltzes in for two. With all that said, Curry in pick and roll has been Golden State's best weapon in the half court in these first two games. Here he just attacks the switch by dusting Grant off the dribble, then a beautiful ball fake to make the corner pass easier, and there's that Gary Payton fella. Here's another bit of subtle brilliance coming off the screen like he's going to shoot, only to dribble right, which pulls Horford over and opens up the pocket pass, and Payton can short roll pass and it's free throws. They've also tried to pull Rob Williams out high in the pick and roll. Curry's too quick for him, and it's another ball fake, and then a beautiful finish off the glass. So naturally, the third quarter barrage started with a Steph pick and roll. Horford's too deep, so Grant sprints to contest the three. Steph just moves it quickly, and that is a wide open three for Otto Porter. On the other end, Peyton is guarding Horford, Curry drops off on Tatum's screening action, then jumps back out to Derek White and sticks to him like glue through the screen. They try to re-screen, but Peyton just switches to the ball, and the shot clock is burned down, and that's a contested three. Only Horford grabs the offensive board, then tries to bully Steph in the post, but Curry stands his ground and reads the pass for a nice steal on a serious defensive stand. After some Draymond free throws, Curry dug right back in defensively, shutting off any driving ideas from the spunky Peyton Pritchard, and GP2 stumbles, so Green makes an insane rotation to run White off the corner, and he steps out of bounds for yet another Draymond-induced turnover. It's more pick and roll from Curry, and since Horford is in the drop, Green screens him off so he can't step up to the ball. That leaves Curry wide open, and he strings another one. With the lead at 14, it's another key defensive play from Steph, stepping up to help and using those crazy reflexes to save a potential layup on the pass. And then on the next trip down, Curry has a counter for the drop, which is just launching from 30 feet, and that doesn't even seem fair. With the lead expanding, Poole then came to life, attacking off the dribble, and notice how the backside movement occupies all the help defenders, so it's an easy game of two-on-two -two for Jordan and Looney. That put the lead at 17, and then Poole really did some damage, dropping in a deep three with 30 seconds left, only to one-up himself on the next play with a half-court swish, and all of a sudden it was a 23-point game. In the fourth, Poole made one more pull-up jumper, and then Al Horford fell down at half court to cap off a 25-2 Golden State run, and that was all she wrote. Gary Payton II's defensive versatility was a critical shot in the arm for the Warriors in this game, and Draymond Green's intensity on that end set the tone for the Warriors all night, holding Boston to just 92 points per 100. Steph Curry was also a big positive for Golden State on defense, and more importantly, his offensive movement and pick and roll game have strained the Celtics' vaunted defense in the first two games of the finals, so Boston might need to find an adjustment to slow down this Warriors attack, because after two games, the Warriors have a 121 offensive rating with Curry on the floor, and so we're headed back to Boston all tied up at one game apiece. For additional content, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. The Thinking Basketball podcast will also cover this series in detail beyond what these videos provide. 
Let me know your thoughts below on this one and the first two games in general. And as always, thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. And I hope wherever you are, you are having a great day.